is the current under um, current notification of NICNET? NICNET is that, as you know, that no chemical, no new chemical will be introduced um, into a Australian market without being listed in AICS, which is Australian Inventory of Chemical Substances. So there are three categories you have to understand. First, exempted chemical. That means a, you don't need to do any, it's, a, it's automatic entry, you know, no, no notification of registration. Um, but they might actually do some random check because you, you claim that it's exempted. So you, don't, you just bring to the, it's kind of free fall. You, you, just brought, uh, you brought the new chemical into the Australian market, but Nick Ness might audit you. Um, but it doesn't have to be replaced on the AICS. And AICA is a no assessment, but no, no inventory. So you, it's not going to be placed in the AICS. Reported is uh, exempted as very low risk, but it reported is low risk, but still you have to report. So instead of, um, they use the now, it's a pre-market advice, and you also need to do annual compliance declaration. Maybe a little bit of good news is that annual compliance declaration is replaced by annual reporting. Annual reporting currently, um, you have to report annually of the chemical name and volume and use, but the annual compliance declaration, you don't have to do that. You're just simply saying that, oh, nothing changed since the original my pre-market uh, advice. But also you are still subjected to post-market audit, and it's not going to be placed on the AICS. Assessed chemical is the most hazardous chemicals, um, and assessment is necessary prior to the market entry. And, and after the assessment is completed, uh, you can request immediately you want to put the chemical into the inventory, or you can wait just five years later, and automatically it's going to be entered to the ASCS. What it all means now, um, so currently Australia and Nick Ness find that there's too much heavy reliance on pre-market um, assessment. So they want to get, get rid of the bottleneck of everything is going through the pre-market control and they also claim that they want to reduce the burden of industry and going through multiple permits, um, certificate, and we have to find other exemptions. So they come up with a hybrid approach of pre-market and post-market control, trying to refocusing on uh, more higher uh, hazardous chemicals. But however, the Nick Ness proposed not to limit uh, the hazard information only that required for the GHS classification. They want to, um, to encourage the industry to fully utilize a, a multiple usage of uh, uh, use of analogs and non-animal testings. So a lot of people asking about polymer. I'm not an expert of a polymer. Maybe John is maybe a polymer. So I just wanted to show that what is the, is any changes to my polymer, especially PLC. A majority actually uh, polymers under the current um, NICNES will be continued the same. So for example, all polymers falling into exposure band E1 will categorize as exempted. And also for environmental risk um, and non-ionic and uh, neonic and polymers um, with this, all these criteria um, will be, uh, you know, so you will be actually the continue the same under the current exigent next. So New Zealand is, um, like I said, the health and safety reform bill passed and signed into law in September 2015, and that actually provoked the two amendments of the two acts, Health and Safety Work Act in 2015, and Hazardous Substances and New Organism Amendment Act 2015. Only takeaway, I don't want to actually go too much detail on that, only takeaway is that actually the in uh, more power to EPA, that's, that's all about it. And under that, the Hazardous Substance New Organism um, Amendment Act 2015, now now EPA can issue EPA notices, which means that without approval of the cabinet, they can actually change a rule with, uh, through their notices, collect the public com uh, comment, and can just finalize the amendment. The importers and manufacturers of hazardous chemicals for any purpose other than purpose personal use must register their details within 30 days of first importing and manufacturing hazardous substances. I just want to bring your attention to this requirement. Um, also, there's a draft of that December 2015, they, they published a draft of the EPA notice that impacting on your um, SDS and labeling. So comment, is, comment period has already ended and, and final notice is expected soon.
So what changed it? They're going to adopt fifth revised GHS. And this time is a good news. Um, you don't have to do conversion anymore um, from your GHS classification into HSNO. That's yay. That's really yay because I thought it was really headache, a lot of headache to do this conversion. So you only can purely use GHS categories and classification. It does apply, though, to both industrial and consumer products. Especially substances scheduled under Australian uh, poison list may comply with the requirement under standard, um, then you can actually exempt it from the GHS. Again, the, uh, but also another important thing is our uh, biocidal products. I know you are maybe some of you are interested in biocidal regulations. And um, you need to have a labeling for any tox ecotoxicity hazard labeling under your biocide products. Uh, this concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.